my uh, researchers personal search engines for multimedia information retrieval. I have around 20 slides, so I'm trying to put 30 seconds on each slide. Um, try not to put give a lot of information because it's not going to really be useful. Uh, the agenda is introduction, why I did that, what I did, a uh, little discussion about personal search engines, what is context, what is video tagging, uh, and the main aim is to design an ideal personal search engine, so we'll talk about that, and of course, conclusion for the studies. So, fundamentally, what, what, what is happening right now? So, there will be around 70 zettabytes of data available online by 2020. That's huge, right? And in 2009, for example, there were 9.4 billion queries only in the US. So, what does that mean? It means that we are going to have a lot of data online very soon. We already have a lot of data. So, what does it mean for the user? For the user, it simply means that he's really going crazy trying to find the information that matters to him. That's, I think every one of us experienced that. So what could be a solution to that? So a solution could be a personal search engine. So you go to google.com and Google understands you. He knows who you are, and when you type something, you type music, for instance, then he knows exactly what music you like and gives you information that you know, is tailored specifically for you. So this is the broad context of the research and I'm trying to uh, find out how different people have taken different approaches to design different elements of these personal search engines. And towards the end, we'll try to, try to, try to design an ideal personal search engine. So let's see how it goes. So the, 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 one of the important uh, uh, topics that I think is important is, is user modeling. So how do you model the user? So uh, you're designing you're trying to design personal search engines, which is personal for each user. So how do you define this user? Who is this user? How can you represent this user in a digital format, for instance? A uh, lot of ways, so I'm trying to summarize uh, these ways into uh, these four uh, categories. So what uh, for instance, browsing history is very important. Browsing history is used by a lot of uh, approaches to, to find out what the user has done online in the past few years, for instance. And then that is used as, that is modeled. And then that is used for, let's say, proactively suggesting things that he might be interested in or uh, trying to semantically understand what he actually means when he types a certain word in the query. The current session is very important. Uh, what, what might happen in your, in a, we will look at context in the next few slides, but irrespective of that, what you're doing at present in the current session is very important and that needs to be modeled very, very clearly. That is one approach that people have used. The second is user profile. It's a very simple way. You can, you, I give you a form, you fill up your form, you, you, you specify who you are, what you like, and then I use that, that information from you to, to, model, um, to model you, the user. Now, another approach uh, that you find is, is, is question and answer. So there's a different for example, Yahoo Answers. So people ask different questions, and depending on that, those questions, you try to model uh, what the user is. So let's have a small discussion of, you know, uh, uh, and this is more about what I thought about what people are doing and my own ideas of what should be done. I think social networks should be included uh, in, in user modeling because it's, it's just a growing, uh, people are using social uh, networks a lot, and they really express themselves through those networks and subgroups that they have. So it could be very interesting if the, if, if the approaches use social networking uh, concepts to model the user. Standard models are not enough. So if I if I try to model you today, you will be a different person tomorrow. So any model that I do of any user, it has to have this dynamic uh, modeling possible. Uh, that is very clear. And privacy is very important. So when you try to model it, when the system tries to model it with the user, changing the user, it needs to have a lot of information about the user. So I need to know what you were doing 10 years back. You know. I need to have the information, so privacy is important. So the person search engine should make sure that they're not really intruding in users' privacy. Next is user interaction. Uh, it's just not uh, the user interface, but it's more specifically how the user, how the system interacts with the user throughout the search process. So my, my, my presentation is a little messed up, but if, uh, for instance, um, one of the concepts uses multi-model inquiries. So the user can input his, his search, not just in, as text, but also as, a, as, 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 as an image, as a, as a video, or, or a speech. So uh, I can just talk to my computer and say, this is my problem, or I can just put an image and say, you know, and express my emotions or thoughts in, a, in terms of an image or a video, and saying, this is what I want, and then search something for me. Uh, and this is, for example, uh, one of the approaches used in which a document is, is not just text, but it's a combination of text, video, image, and, and, and there are different links coming from where the information comes from and where it goes that has been used by one of the approaches the second interesting part is electronic road. So this is one concept used by a paper in which 
uh, the system at every step till you reach a final, till you're happy, till you're satisfied, it gives you recommendations. So you find something, you search for something, and it gives you five recommendations. So you choose one recommendation, then you go next, then you go next step. So it's like it creates an electronic road, and then it, it's, it's with the user all the time. That's one approach. Uh, the other approach is taxonomy. So it's basically the, your own annotations that you have used, the, your own words that you have used to uh, interact with the system. So uh, this, this particular approach is uses those annotations. Uh, so it creates basically a kind of relationship between the user and all the bookmarkings that he has done, and then tries to um, as, uh, give personal results based on that. Another approach is high level to low level. It's similar to the electronic code, but it's like when you first do a search, the system analyzes the high level points of your, your search and it expresses them in different points. So this is this a guy who did some search about Apple. So there are different things about Apple that he, uh, uh, he shows you first. He does not give you the complete list of all the queries like Google does. And then you choose what you want and then you, you know, maybe you click on this and then it gives you the next step. Uh, it's another discussion. So, why can't we have personalized user interfaces? So I go to uh, Google.com and uh, um, it interacts with me in a, in a way that I like. Uh, uh, maybe the, the, the interface itself and the way it presents um, uh, the results to me. It could also be personalized. That's, that's one uh, way we could look at it. Touch-based visual interfaces I, I think are very uh, useful uh, sometimes in search, especially when the user is in a hurry. So you're, you're running in a train station and you, and you want some information fast and you, you, have, you have so many things in mind so you just want to have visual representation a, a visual interface possible that you can just search easily and, and get your results. So that, that's one. And uh, for instance, Google's custom search, search engines, uh, you might be knowing about that. So it offers you a chance to um, set up your own website that you want to search information from and not the whole web itself. So, that's, so these are some of the options that um, could be looked at when you design user interfaces. Now, context is very important, as we have discussed even in the last. Uh, Program. So the context is very important, I, I think, uh, when you're trying to make a personal search engine because you have to understand under what context the user is making that particular search. And that is, that is very important to uh, really make a personal search engine. So again, uh, different methods have been used in, in the literature to try to quantify what context is. For instance, people have used weighted vectors of current interest. So at this moment, I have interest in five different fields at very different levels. So I'll try to model those uh, and say, okay, my interest in music is from, on a range 0 to 10, 9. Um, technology is 8, for instance. So I try to model that. And that provides a kind of context to the search engine to make searches. Location. Location is important. Uh, uh, it's easy. Current activity. Now, uh, people have tried to use mobile phones or, or, or you know, different sensors to find out automatically what activity the user is involved with. And that has been used as uh, specific context. Browsing history again has been used because that is, it makes a lot of sense. So you, what you have done in the past quite reflects what kind of person you are. And of course, the kind of time. Time is very important. The user will change. Uh, so, if, so if I'm trying to define a context and I say uh, on, on, in 2011 the person is like this, it does not mean that the person will be like that next year. So the context should have a temporal, very specific temporal uh, information over there. Uh, in the discussion again, first point of time is very critical. So when we kind of make a context, we have to have a temporal tag. We have to put in that this was the context of the person uh, at this time. And this will be useful not just for the system, but also for the user to look back at what he has done uh, and, and understand probably himself to improvise the search. And probably new results for old queries. So I made a query yesterday, and I did not find uh, probably uh, um, good results, so I was not very, very happy, uh, like Google Alerts. So you can, you know, the, the system will come back and say, I understood your context a year back and now I have information that I could give it to you. Maybe you're not living that context anymore, maybe you've forgotten about it, but I think I should give you this information. So that is the idea. Multimedia tagging I have specifically concentrated on videos because they're tough and they're more interesting. In clustering, uh, that's an existing tag. So there is, so a uh, lot of papers have concentrated on how to bootstrap from the existing tags. So there are so many tags. Uh, context. So you you have tagged a lot of video tags already. We make use of that, uh, and then we s draw a similarity between those tags and existing videos, and then we try to recommend different tags to you based on what you've already done. Video content is similar. It's it's, it's more signal processing based. So you analyze the video, and you make divide into frames and shots, and then uh, 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 analyze the, the, the actual content, and 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 suggest a few tags. That's 
pure signal processing in, in a way. One click recommended tag, so it's like uh, I have a small bag of, you know, watching a video and the, um, uh, and the system offers you uh, certain tags that you could, you know, just click and, and say, oh yeah, maybe it's funny, you click on it. And so it's pretty simple. Time aware tag clusters, I think the, uh, the main idea is, 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 is yeah, the main idea is that um, you are aware of the context of the user, so you, you, you will offer tags depending on what the user is doing at that point of time. Implicit tags, it's basically you're trying to basically read the, uh, the user expressions and, and, and suggest if he's sad, you know, and then automatically put a sad uh, action hurry. Uh, okay, let's skip something. Very fast. So what are the problems in trying to design uh, an idle uh, personal search? You know, so privacy, so different kind of privacy, you know, query and any certain semantic information is, is, is really tough because some people, people have different ways and reasons to tag, sometimes they don't tag, sometimes they, they tag on selectively, so that's a problem. And of course the time is very uh, important because uh, there will be a lot of data and there will be a lot of search done, so um, this is very important. So last section, so trying to design an ideal uh, personal search engine, so the search should be a combination of different things and not just one uh, one specific static search, so it has to have a post search, pre search and analyzing what you have done and then a back and forth with the user. Uh, maybe you can also try to visualize uh, 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 the user context itself. You can, uh, this is the same person, maybe he can be a parent, actor, student, job seeker, single colleague at the same time, or different times. So if you allow the user to even see himself in different contexts in the system, it will allow the, it will educate the user more so you can make better choices uh, um, to do the search. And of course, multi-model user interface. I mean, you have to give the user a choice to implement and input this, this data, as well as representation of the search results in different formats, I mean, videos, audio, and everything possible. So, so whatever you can think of the future should be a part of this uh, interface. Conclusion, yeah, uh, the design of a personal surgeon has to be multi-dimensional task. So a lot of different research have to be done in different fields and then they have to be combined. They have to be both individual and collaborative ways because we are not, our context is not just personal. We are in different groups. We express ourselves in different uh, social groups. Temperate aspects are very, very important because users keep evolving. The, the, the needs keep changing. So any model that you make today has to take care of what happens to the users tomorrow and how the system evolves with time. And for the research, uh, my, my only suggestion, uh, apart from all the multi-dimensional talks is, is, is happening, is that there has to be something about unification of the, all these concepts. So the different things happening in different areas, a lot of sub-research uh, research happening, but if you want to make a real personal uh, search engine that, that, that really like one solution for all, then you have to also have search on how to unify all those concepts and take the best and pick, um, do that. And, I have a question, so I'm playing more time. Okay, thank you. <laughs>